Hi, my name is Robert Bennett, and we're at Jim Henson's Creature Shop celebrating Fraggle Rocktober, getting crafty, creating our own DIY Halloween costume. Together we will find items and DIY our very own Fraggle fashion, perfect for all ages and an evening of trick-or-treating. So get ready and let's get creative. Today we're going into the world of Fraggle Rock hanging out with Boober and the Doozers to create our very own secondhand DIY Halloween costume. To find our supplies, we will head to Goodwill to search around for the perfect pieces to create our Halloween costume. Let's go thrifting. So we're here at Goodwill, Southern California to source secondhand items for our Fraggle Rock inspired costume. We want something that's fun, bright colors, something with a lot of movement, something over the top, something that's perfect Jim Henson. All right, so the best thing about Halloween costumes is that they span all ages, from adults to kids. So I think today we're gonna try to put together a kid's outfit, and maybe since we're in the theme of Fraggle Rock, we'll do a doozer. And it's a perfect costume for a kid because doozers have energy, there's accessories. With that in mind, we're gonna start with looking for certain colors, feel. We can start over here, maybe try to find some pants. Start with our basic objects first, like our, our pants, our shirts, and then we can build off of that once we get our foundation. These are perfect. It's not exactly the right color and there's stripes, but it's still in the, the world. It's still colorful, fun, exactly what uh, Fraggle Rock embodies. So we'll, we'll pick these up. If you look at different textures, maybe if you were doing a different doozer, you could use this for the skin or overlaying on something. This is a perfect piece. It's still in the right world, right in colors, but it also is a hoodie. And since it's gonna be fall and Halloween, you're gonna be outside, you know, trick-or-treating. It's nice to stay bundled up. This is actually the, almost the exact color of the doozers. And you can tell, you know, you're already starting to get a nice look and feel. And once again, even though it's not exact, it's still fun and, and colorful. And you know, sometimes if you find a pair of pants of the right color, the right shape, but they're a little too long, you can always hem them yourself, tailor stuff for your needs. Even stuff like this, like it's not exactly what we're looking for, but you can always take fabric like this and, and use the tassels for something, you know, maybe for hair, or you can glue it to things just for extra movement. So now that we have our shirt and pants kind of figured out, we want to start thinking about the accessories of the doozer, and they're very bright. And when I was a kid, you know, I used to always make my own Halloween costumes, and this was where I would come to find stuff. I mean, thrifting is the best way to find unique things that you're not gonna find anywhere else. But as you can see, like, these are the colors that we're looking for. Um, maybe something bright orange, bright red. Trying to find the perfect thing, knowing that you probably won't, but then when you actually find it, it's even better. So, I mean, this is, this is gonna be what ties the entire costume together. So, this is awesome. Let's doozer this. Okay, so we already have some great pieces for our costume, but we're still missing two main ingredients, a hat and accessories. So we're gonna see what we can find. So the doozers, they have stuff all over their vests. They have tools, they have calculators, flashlights. So anything in that world will be uh, right on point. So like, this is perfect a big flashlight. It's even in the right color scheme. This may be a little too big for what we're looking for. This is actually perfect. It's a little toolkit set and we don't have to use the whole thing. We can just use the tools that um, it comes with, but this is a great find. Since I've been walking around the store, I found a lot of the same kind of colors and textures, which has inspired me to do a boober look. So I found this bath mat and it has such great color and texture and movement, very puppety. And the fraggles themselves, they have furry torsos. And I think the scale for an adult has gotten perfect. The main way to make a vest out of this. So I got the hat and now it's time to find some pants for Boober. Now Boober's color is 
It's in that mint green world, so we want to find something that's kind of greenish. These are perfect. It's the right cut, right shape, right color. I think these are going to be the winners. So we're back at the shop, and we found a bunch of great items at Goodwill for our Doozer costume. The most iconic parts of the Doozer are the hat and the vest, so that's what we're gonna work on today. So let's start on our Doozer vest. On the real Doozers, they have all this detail. They have tools, piping, the whole edge of the vest is lined, and so we're gonna try to recreate that with ribbon. So in order to create the iconic piping on the vest, we found some ribbon, so now what we need to do is cut it, iron it, and glue it on. So that's what we're gonna do. And then as you pull, it will keep it taut and even. The best trick is to always start on the back of your piece, and that way you know the front will look clean. So what you wanna do is line up your iron seam the bottom of the vest. Once you have it lined up, put a line of hot glue. And then continue that process the entire way around the edge of the vest. Another important thing is leave the outside unglued until you've glued down the back side of the ribbon. If you go in small sections, you might end up with a wave look instead of a nice straight clean look. So if you glue it down maybe a foot at a time, you're able to grab two ends and make sure that your line is straight. So when you're gluing ribbon around a curve, the ribbon is not elastic, it's not gonna give for that curve, so you kind of have to force it down. So once again, you want to start with the back, and then carefully line up the edge of your vest with your iron line. So as you can see, we have a little puckering here. The easiest way is just to snip it. And then you're gonna overlap one side over the other. And be careful because this is very hot, so use the back of your scissors. And because your scissors are metal and they're cold, it's actually gonna help it cool down almost instantly. You're gonna do the same thing on the front, just carefully glue it down, and there you go. So now that we've glued our ribbon to our vest, it's time to add the accessories, and this is where the family comes in. Doozers are known for their wild personalities, and each one of their vests represents what they do. Some have calculators, some have tools. What are you interested in? This is where you can put yourself into the costume. Are you a gamer, an artist, maybe a wizard? Who knows? But this is where you can personalize it. So now we need to place our tools, and once you've placed them, we need to secure them. So we're gonna use hot glue. As you can see on their vests, they have little piping that holds the tools on. So we're gonna recreate that with the rest of the ribbon that we have. So you wanna start at the edge, so you have a nice clean line. And then to make it look like this is actually keeping the tools in, you want to glue as close as you can to the edges. And then keeping the ribbon taut, press it down over the creases. And then continue this process until you've gone all the way around the vest. So for the last piece of your vest, just add a little ribbon strip to the top of the shoulders. So now that our vest is done, it's time to move on to the hat. 
So the thing that makes the Doozer so iconic are their accessories, their vest, their hat. So we're gonna start on the hat now. Now we picked up these firefighter hats at Goodwill. So we're gonna try to recreate the iconic shapes and lines of the Doozer hat on these. So as you can see at the top of the hat, there's this ridge. So we wanna recreate this with cardboard. Now I have foam core, which you can pick up at any local craft store. And I think the density, it's dense, it's light, and it's easy to work with, so this is the material we need. The best way to kind of get your shape for this is to draw out a silhouette of the side of the helmet on a piece of paper. So hold the hat as parallel as you possibly can, and then use your pen to do an outline. Just like you do your hand for turkey art for Thanksgiving, same concept. Clean up that, that arc. And as we can see, it's, it's a very thin piece. So we want to make it a little substantial so it lasts for the night. We're gonna make it about a quarter of an inch thickness. And as you can see here, there's a little step off piece that keeps it standing up. So we're gonna to wanna to recreate that as well. So as you can see, our pattern's a little messy. So we wanna retrace it before we actually start making our pattern and cutting out our pieces. And because we use this dark ink, when you put another piece of paper over it, there's enough of a ghosting where you can see the underneath lines. So now we have our final pattern piece. Now what you wanna do is you wanna cut your pattern out so that you can transfer these lines to your actual material that you're gonna make your helmet out of. Very carefully with some scissors. Cut out all of your pieces. So we finished cutting out our pattern pieces. Keep the extra paper for other projects. As you can see, it lines up pretty well, so I think we're good to go. So now we're just finishing up tracing our pieces onto our material. And now it's time to cut these pieces out. You're gonna to wanna to use an X-Acto blade. When you're cutting foam core, you wanna make sure that you're at a 90 degree angle. If you're not at a 90 degree angle, once you start gluing all this together, you're gonna to have weird lines, all your edges are gonna be warped. You wanna be meticulous and take your time. Foam core is two pieces of paper with foam in the middle. And so you really just wanna cut the top piece of paper initially, not go all the way through. Once you've scored it, it's almost made a guide for the blade to go back through. This time you wanna press down. And so you can see you have a nice clean edge. So now that we've cut out our pieces, we need to make the top part. But as you can see, there's a lot of curves going on here. It's like an S. And this foam core doesn't really wanna do that. So we have to force it to make this curve. What I've done is I've cut a long strip of foam core, an inch and a half wide, is we're gonna score little lines all the way down the entire length of this, about an eighth of an inch spacing between each line. So as you're cutting it, you wanna make small, short lines, and once again, you're not trying to go all the way through the foam core. You're just trying to cut that top piece of paper. So now that we have our spacer cut and perforated, we're gonna start gluing it to the edge. So you just wanna take one of your pieces, start at one end, and then we're gonna start gluing. And as you can see, where we scored it, it's made it where it bends really nice and contours to the shape. And as you're gluing it down, you wanna force it to make sure that it actually makes the bend that we're looking for. And once we have one side done, we'll move to the next. So this is a really finicky piece, but it's the details that make the costume iconic. And it's also really fun. So now that we have our piece made, we need to paint it. And we're gonna paint it red. You can go to your local craft store, uh, pick up any kind of cheap red paint, acrylic, and you want a synthetic brush 
There's tons of cheap options. And this is a great activity for you and your little doozer to do. A trick when painting is you don't wanna lay a bunch of paint down right away. You're gonna risk dripping and it's probably gonna take a lot longer to dry. The trick is to do small light coats. Even though you're not gonna completely cover it the first time, it's actually gonna make the process a lot faster because it allows the paint to dry quicker than if you put a really thick layer on. As you're painting, you wanna feather it off the piece so you don't get any paint lines. You don't want any brush lines when you're done. Because as you can see, this helmet is very shiny, very smooth, so you wanna match that. And as you can see, we're already getting a nice, rich color with just a couple of passes. So now we have our piece finished. So as you can see, it fits our hat perfectly. But if you don't have a firefighter hat, you can always use a baseball cap. And as you can see, even just by adding this to a baseball cap, it instantly makes it the iconic doozer hat. Another cool trick is we can take a red cup, it's already the right color, the right sheen, and we can cut this to create the detail on the front of this hat. We'll start by cutting it in half. And then you wanna place it on your piece, because it might be too big, too small, So there we go. Once you have everything cut and placed, you wanna glue it down. And we're gonna be using hot glue again. Pick your piece up and the best way to make sure that your glue lines up is to add the glue to this piece, not to your helmet. When you're positioning it, make sure the hat is directly to you and try to line it up as evenly as possible. Once we have our top piece added, we'll glue the front piece on. And once again, you wanna to glue to your piece that you're adding, not to the main piece. And you might not get enough glue the first time around, you just need enough to tack it into place. Once it's in place, you can go back and re-glue it. And now we have our iconic doozer hat. So based on the colors that we found, Boober was the obvious choice. Remember that great bath mat? It's perfect for his torso. We found that awesome hat. We're gonna recreate his hair and this awesome tail. Let's get started. This bath mat we got at Goodwill, there's actually two pieces. There's a bigger piece and a smaller piece. We're gonna use the small bath mat for the back, so like this, and then we'll use the bigger bath mat for our front piece. And we're gonna make sure that the edges of the bath mat line up to the seams on our body. We're gonna hot glue them. You can use a sewing machine, but if you don't, hot glue is perfect. You want the excess of the back mat to be on the bottom. If it's on the front, you're gonna have a bunch of stuff that you're gonna need to cut off when you're done. You wanna line up your seams, and since we're not sewing this, we're gluing it, we wanna take some cotton fabric. It could be any kind of cotton fabric. It could be bed sheets, and you wanna cut a, a strip that gives you about an inch on either side of your seam. As you can see, there's enough space on either side to make sure that there's a nice lock. Once you get everything set up, you wanna get your glue gun and you wanna start working from the top and you wanna work slowly. You don't wanna do a big piece because by the time you get down here and you start gluing your fabric up here, it might be too dry. Once you have your glue down, lay the fabric and lightly hit it with your palm. You wanna make sure that the glue gets in that fabric so it's a nice seal. Now eventually, at some point, we're gonna to need to cut a hole for your arm to go through, but you may not know exactly where that's gonna be right now, so the best thing is to just glue the whole length and then we'll cut after. So now that we have this seam done, it's time to work on the other seam. So we're gonna flip this, for this side, we're not gonna glue it. We wanna have ties so it's easy to take on and off. So I have some ribbon, and luckily I was able to find the right color. And what we wanna do is make little ties, little bow ties. We wanna put our, punch our hole in there. Take your ribbon, push it through, and then we're gonna make a knot. What we wanna do is we wanna get the other piece of ribbon secured. So you wanna line it up, 
and then you want to make another hole directly across and make a knot. And you're only going to continue this all the way up, about halfway up, because remember, your arm is going to come through right here. So as you can see, now we have a nice fastener for the side of the vest. So now that the sides are done, we're going to glue the top of the shoulders together. What you want to do is you want to line it up, basically fold it in half, and then in the middle you're going to leave about a foot for your neck and your head to go through. And we're going to use the same technique with our fabric and we're going to glue our seams together. For this one, once you get it together, kind of lay it flat-ish so it's easier to work with. Same technique, add your glue and your fabric on top. And we're going to do the same exact thing to the other side. Now you don't have to use a bath mat, you can use a towel, a t-shirt, as long as it's the right color, it'll work. What I love when it comes to making costumes is finding pieces. You can always go to the store and get exactly what you need, but it's more fun and way more creative to take something that you wouldn't normally think would be that thing and to turn it into it. I remember when I was a kid, like that's, I didn't really have access to the newest technology and the newest materials. So I would use cardboard and hot glue to, to make things. And I think that's what turns your creativity on, is thinking way outside of the box, to look at something that would never be what it is and to turn it into that thing. That's what's exciting. So now that we have our shoulders glued, we need to cut our armholes. On one side, we have the ribbon, so we don't need to do that, but on the other side, we're gonna need to make a little incision. So the best way to do that is to fold your piece completely in half, so. And then on this side, you're just gonna take your scissors and cut about a foot, about 12 inches. But you don't wanna go all the way up to the top, you wanna leave about six to five inches at the top. So now that we've done that, we have our arm access holes. Let's flip it inside out. And now we have our fraggle vest. So I have to cut a little excess off the bottom of this bath mat, but it gives me an idea. So it's always important to keep your scraps because you never know what you can use it for. Remember that bath mat? Let's take that excess and make a tail out of it. So now that we have our strip, we wanna make a tube. And so just like before, we're gonna line up our edges and add a small bead of hot glue all the way down. Now once again, you wanna do this in small increments so that your hot glue doesn't dry. About two to three inches at a time. Lay your glue on one side and then meet up the other edge and gently hold it together until the glue sets. Now before we finish gluing this up, we need some sort of attachment. So I have a giant shoestring here. What we're gonna do is fold it in half, leave yourself about six inches excess so that you can actually tie it to your belt buckle or to your pants. Put the rest of it into the tube and put a few tacks of hot glue to keep it in place. And then continue gluing the seams together. So now we have our tail done. Now I picked up this great wig for Boober's head, but in the spirit of being creative, we're gonna use it for his tail. One unique thing about Boober is that his tail lights up. So we're gonna do that, and if you can, you should do it too. So the top of a Fraggle's tail is called a Belubius, and Boober's actually lights up. So we're gonna try to do that. We have our wig, and I was able to pick up this scrunchie that lights up, but we don't really want it in the scrunchie, so we're gonna cut out the lights. 
So if you don't have a light-up scrunchie, there's other options. You can get battery-operated LEDs from your local store. You can use a glow stick if you have a glow stick, maybe a light-up wand. There's all different possibilities. Now that we have all of our pieces, we can start to assemble. Now a wig wants to splay out because that's what wigs do, but because it's a fraggle tail, we need to make sure that it's secure at the base so that you get that nice pom-pom look. And the best way to secure this is just a household zip tie, just like this. But before we do that, we want to integrate our lights. So with them on, we want to position them evenly so you don't have a bunch of lights in one spot. So after you've placed your lights, you want to make sure that your on and off switch is accessible. So we're going to place it at the bottom right where our zip tie is going to be. And then we're going to slowly roll this. And you want to make sure that it's rolled really tight at the end. Grab it all. And then attach your zip tie. And now you have your fun little light up tail. And to attach it, just like we've been doing before, a little hot glue. You wanna add it to the inside of your piece, all the way around, a generous amount, because once this thing goes in, it's not coming back out. And as you can see, we still have our on and off switch accessible. And then once you're done, you can fluff it out, reposition the lights if need. And we have a beautiful light up boober tail. So one of the things about Boober is that you never see his eyes because of his iconic hair. So what we're gonna do is recreate his hair with pants we found from Goodwill. I know it sounds crazy, but I'll show you how to do it. So these pants are perfect because the color's perfect, and not only the color, it has a nice weight to it, so it allows us to cut it and manipulate it without it falling apart. So what we're gonna do, we got our hat here. You can place the hat on your head and kind of see how long the wig needs to be for you. So you kind of want it to be about right below your nose. So we're talking about maybe six inches, seven inches. You're gonna measure that out on your pants and you're gonna cut a straight line, cutting both pants so that when you're done, you have two even pieces. Once you have these pieces, you wanna cut it again on the seam so you can open it up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut vertical lines all the way down this piece of fabric, about an eighth of an inch away from each other. So maybe start in the middle and very carefully start cutting straight lines. And you wanna leave about an inch to an inch and a half to the top. You don't wanna cut all the way. We're basically making fringe. So once you have your piece cut, it's gonna look something like this. Now you can already see it has nice movement to it, but it still needs something else. I was able to find this yarn. It's not exactly the right color, but it's close enough. So now we wanna add more texture to our fringe and we're gonna use this yarn to do it. So in order to do this, we wanna lay our fringe out fairly straight, get one end of your yarn, put a spot of glue, and lay it down. And then instead of cutting it at this point, you just wanna loop it back up. Maybe give yourself an inch space at the bottom. Tack down the next piece. And you're gonna continue this the entire length of the piece. What's great about the pants that we found is they're such great quality they really hold up to everything that we're doing to it. This is a lot of cutting, a lot of manipulating, and so you need good quality fabric so that it's not falling apart mid-project. So now that we have all of our yarn glued down and we cut the loops on the bottom so that they splay out nicely like here, you can see we have our final finished piece. 
And look at the movement and the texture and the color. It's perfect. Now, the last thing we need to do is glue our wig inside of our hat. So what we're gonna do is take our hat, and you wanna kind of position it, make sure it's comfortable for you. So I think this is gonna be our front. And you want all the nice yarn to be on the outside. Um, if you glued it this way, you kind of lose the yarn look. And after we spend all that time doing it, you know, you really want to highlight it. So we're going to make sure that the yarn's on the outside. Fold your piece in half so you know where the center is. And then line that up with the center of your hat. And then very carefully, you're going to go around the edge and tack it down with hot glue. And now we have our iconic boober wig. So here we have our final doozer costume, which is perfect for a kid. We have our iconic mint green shirt, our pants, all of our accessories. If you don't find gloves like this, you can use gardening gloves, you can use workers gloves, anything that's kind of the right color and style. Everything that's iconic about a doozer. For our second costume, we have boober over here. And once again, as you can see, our pants that we picked out, perfect our sweatshirt, even the scarf. And look how fun the hair is that we made. Isn't it incredible how you can just take pants and yarn and create such a fun and vibrant look? I mean, this is so in the world of Fraggle Rock. And of course, don't forget the tail. And you gotta turn it on. There we go. So we have our Fraggle Rock costumes finally done. Now it's time for you to create yours. Have a happy Halloween and a great Fraggle Rocktober.